Okay, so here we are. Now what I want to show you guys today is a quick and easy way to set up your camera to do a nice, uh, you know, rotation around your object. Um, I'll just show you exactly what I've done here. Well, there's my little guy. Uh, so here's the video that I created using this free model from Grayscale. This is going to be fast. I should have made it longer, but I wanted to, to render it out quickly so you could see. But essentially I've just created this little quick spin around. All right, now that was way too fast. It should probably be more like this. It should probably be more of like a, that, that about that speed is pretty good, you know, something like that. Maybe that's even too fast. But anyway, this is a continual rotation. And the nice thing about this is the camera ends exactly where it starts. Okay, so why would that be important, do you think? Anybody? What's that? Right, but to have it end where it starts allows you to loop it. Okay, if I hit Apple L, I can loop this thing around. And so let's say you wanted to make this a little flash element on your website, or you wanted to have it play continuously in a video, or repeat it again a bunch of times in editing software so you can just get it to loop around. If the camera stops exactly where it starts, then, then you can continue to loop this thing around and have a continual rotation. Now there's one frame that stops. I could delete that frame so it would just be continually spinning around. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so that's what I've created. Now let's see how I did that. First thing I did was <clears throat> I cheated. I didn't make a model. I grabbed it online for free. So that's something that, that I don't want you to do. But uh, I placed a model at zero, okay, which is just exactly where I, uh, where I wanted to have this thing. Then the other thing I did was I've added this, what's called the light stage, right? I wanted to just grab a quick and easy lighting situation. And if you go to the, to the browser, the content browser, you can find under Cinema 4D and Light Setups this three-point light stage. It's three lights that are, that are focused at the 0, 0, 0 coordinate uh, that have a nice kind of glow to them. They're different lights. And you can actually control them individually. If you double click this, it'll pop it right into your scene. Um, and the other thing that I, I just added a floor. So the lights would have something to, to hit, and I could place an object in that scene. So let's just look here. The three point light stage, when you open this up, you have these three lights. You have a main spotlight, you have the effects light, and then you have the fill light. And this gives a nice kind of even glow around this object. So if we just sort of, let's just go a few steps ahead here. So we render this out really quickly. You can see that um, it's filling the light in really nicely. It casts a nice shadow. There's a nice sense of, there's a warm light hitting on one side. There's a cool light hitting on another side. And it's just a really nice kind of even cast. So that was a quick and easy way to do that. Then I just went in and I sort of played around with the color of the shadow. You can also adjust the position to, to your preference. You can do a lot of things to make that light set up really good. So that's an option. You can use any of those. Um, presets in the web content browser. Okay? Now, the, the cool thing that I've done here is you'll notice that there, if we look at the top view, there's a spline right here. Okay, you see that? And then if we view this in the top view, if I play this, notice how the camera wraps or follows that spline. Okay? Now this is something that's really great for this project, but think about this in terms of other animation. If you create an object and you draw a path that's a spline path, you can cr make that object follow a spline as well. So there's lots of things, hi right, Todd, there's lots of things that you can do to uh, use this align to spline technique. Now basically what happens is, let me just open up a, a let's just, I'm going to get rid of all these, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here, the camera. All right, so here's what I've done. I have my scene with my lighting set up just how I want it. The next thing I do is in the top view, I'm just going to go into my, um, my uh, preset uh, splines and drop in a circle. Okay, and when I drop this in, notice how it's too small. So instead of the radius 200, I'm just going to make this 800. Okay, and that gives me a nice big uh, uh, circle that I can go around to follow the camera. Now the other thing that I want to do is, you know, I don't want it to be just in one continuous line, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit and then I'm also just going to offset this a little bit so I'm going to grab the rotate tool and just rotate it so the camera will tip down a little bit 
and then go back up. So it's not just one continuous rotisserie, but it kind of like has a little bit of a fluid motion to it, uh, which, which could be kind of nice. Now the next thing I want to do, once I have my path that I want this camera to follow, I need to add a camera. So I'm going to go uh, up into the light and cameras. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a target camera. All right, because I want the, because we're going at a slight slope and angle here, I want the camera to continuously follow a fixed point. So I'm going to grab the target camera. And when you do that, you'll notice that you have a camera and a target. Now the target, um, well, actually, let's do this first. The camera, we need to, to tell the camera that we want it to follow the spline. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we're going to add what's called a composition tag. So if you look up here in the object manager, there's a, there's a menu called tags. So if you select that and then go down to Cinema 4D Tags, you can select Align to Spline. Okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to create a little menu for the camera to tell the camera it needs to follow the path of that spline. Okay? Now, this doesn't happen automatically. You need to, in that tag, in the Objects Manager, once, that, once you select that actual tag and it's highlighted, you can see below it says in the attributes manager spline path okay we want to tell the 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 tag what spline we want it to follow okay because you may have a lot of splines out there so we need to be specific um, so actually what I'm going to do is just call this camera circle all right just so I remember go back to my uh, composition tag and I'm going to drag this camera circle tag right down into this where it says spline path and you notice what happens when I've done that now the camera is directly on the path of that spline so that's pretty cool right now let's take a look at what that looks like through the camera so if I go up to uh, cameras and scene camera and I just select the camera it's looking down right now at the at zero 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 okay so I don't want that so what I can do the reason why I use a target camera is that all I need to do is select the target. I'm going to grab the move tool and I'm just going to pull the target up a little bit into about the middle of the van or the object that you want it to follow. Okay. Now the next thing is it's kind of zoomed in too close, right? So I'm just going to select the camera and notice how uh, these little yellow tabs come up. You can also see them out here as well. Yeah, I'm just going to grab one of these and drag it out and notice what happens, this is going to change my focal length a little bit and, and, uh, and also the field of view. So now I have the, the, the van in focus where I want it to be. I have uh, the path I want the camera to follow and now I want to animate that camera. All right, here we go. So I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to go over to the object tag. Now you have to, you have to actually select what you want to animate here. So we want to animate the camera but in particular we want to animate the properties of the tag. Now notice down below we have the spline path, we also have the position. Right now it's at zero percent, okay? And notice what happens when you click and add more percents, all right, as you go up we're going to be going, moving around this circle further, okay? So in order for us to animate this to go all the way around, we want it to start at zero percent, we want it to end at 100 percent. So it'll make a full 360 path around the object. All right, so here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back to the beginning <clears throat> of my uh, animation. I'm going to hit the auto keyframe button. All right, I'm going to make sure my position is at zero. And I'm just going to dro manually drop in a keyframe. All right, right there. Um, and then actually I'm going to make this longer. Let's make this 180 frames, a little bit longer see all those things. All right, so I have my, um, I have my keyframe at zero. I'm going to move to the end of the animation at 180. Uh, with my auto keyframes on, I'm just going to type in 100%, hit return, and you notice that when I do that, a little red button appears next to position, because that's what I'm keyframing. That tells me that I am actually have affected that keyframe. And once that happens, you can also see the keyframe in the timeline. So I'm just going to turn the auto keyframe off, and I should be able to just, well, I have to be on this one. There we go. And now you can see a nice, smooth animation that follows the spline path. And because we have the a target camera, 
the camera is adjusting its position to always have that target in the center of the frame of vision. Okay, So it's a great, quick and easy way that you can create that nice subtle animation um, going around an object and following a nice path. And also, you know, instead of just rotating the object itself, we can rotate around it. And again, you can have a little bit of view on top of it. You could have a little bit of view below it. So we can see a, a more consistent sense of, uh, of what this object is made of. Okay. So I want to see in these quick displays, you know, I want to be able to get a clear view of what that object is. Make sure with the lighting too, adjust your lighting so that as you're going around, we don't get a, a view that's just total shadow. Okay. We don't want it to be blown out and have a total shadow view. Uh, so, so check that out as you go. And again, you can preview this in the make a preview. You can render it as a make preview and see that. And then once you're finished, you're going to render this out. The render setting should be 720 by 480. It's going to be a full render. Okay. Same with your, uh, your text, your moving logo text. The final output should be 720 by 480. Okay. Any questions?